How's it going? Chris with Be Automation here. And in this video, I'm gonna reveal why a team of versatile generalists is crucial for success in automation and control industries, especially for micro to small businesses. And I'm gonna walk you through our proven blueprint designed to equip engineers with comprehensive skills, in-depth knowledge, and a thorough understanding necessary for delivering professional control and automation systems to the highest standards across all electrical industries. But before we dive in, I want to assure you that everything I'm about to share comes from real world, first-hand experience. And I've had the privilege of helping numerous electrical businesses within the industry develop their teams into skilled, confident professionals in automation and controls. So here's a brief overview of my journey so far. And I started as an electrical mechanical engineer right out of school and have since navigated through the three main sectors of automation, smart home automation, building management systems, BMS, and industrial controls and instrumentation. And my experience ranges from serving as a partner coach with Loxon UK, where I assisted their installer network in winning and executing smart home and commercial building automation projects, to working as an electrical controls engineer at R&B Industrial, focusing on every aspect of industrial control systems. And this includes the design, the panel building, programming, and overseeing the entire installation and commissioning process. And then lastly, I worked as a contractor with Neo System Automation, specializing in high-end residential and commercial BMS systems. Now, the biggest problem that I see with micro to small businesses within our industry is that it's incredibly rare for all members of an engineering team to fully grasp each stage of a project. And in a typical micro to small business, you have specialists handling different stages of the project lifecycle. Now, for a moment, just imagine what would happen if your business hits a rough patch and you had to unfortunately downsize to just you and one other team member. And you most likely ask yourself, who is the one person that could deliver projects on their own if needed to, to keep my business going? And the answer is, if you have one, is the controls engineer. And the reason you have to keep him or her, but in this example, it's a him, is that you realize he's the only member of the team who has insight into every stage of the project life cycle. And when push comes to shove, is capable of delivering full projects solo to keep your business going. Your controls engineer is the epitome of a generalist and incredibly valuable to micro and small businesses. But you might be asking yourself, well, what would be so valuable having a team of generalist control engineers over specific task focused specialists. Well, firstly, each member would be flexible and adaptable and able to transition between different tasks and stages throughout the project. So if team members are ever on holiday, off sick or on leave, there's no bottleneck stopping production and you're still able to deliver complete projects. Also, it enhances team ownership and motivation, creating stronger group responsibility for the project as a whole, where their team members aren't just focused on their individual slice of the pie, but the entire process, which leads to better performance, team camaraderie, and removes that attitude of not my job, not my responsibility. And of course, there's many more benefits operating your business in this way, but for time's sake, we can't go into all of them. But this third reason that I'm going to share with you is probably my favorite, and that is a team of generalists eliminates knowledge silos. Now, what do I mean by this? We've all come across that person in an organization, typically the older, more experienced and usually miserable member of the team, gatekeeping their expertise. Well, when you have a team of generalists, this breeds a culture of free-flowing information and knowledge across all team members, which removes any power or control that miserable older members of the team have. And actually, when you think about it, a team of specialists operating in the traditional way, it's very common for problems to develop such as bottlenecks in production, poor culture and slow professional development of team members. Now, I'm not dismissing the value of specialization, it certainly has its place, especially in larger engineering departments. However, the situation is different in small teams, having engineers who are actively engaged, deeply invested in their work, and are jack of all trades and masters of some, presents a more versatile and less risky strategy compared to relying solely on a team of specialists. All right, so now let's run through the blueprint that's transformed both my business and my coaching clients' businesses, equipping their engineers with the skills knowledge and understanding to turn them into those versatile generalists that are so critical 
to the success of small businesses. And this blueprint has been applied across all the major industries from smart home automation to commercial BMS and of course, industrial controls and instrumentation. But before we do that, let's quickly circle back to our most valuable team member, our controls engineer. Why is this member so indispensable? So let's break down their role at each stage of a project in a business that operates in the traditional way. So the first part is selling and specifying. Though often led by the business owner, the controls engineer influences what's specified based on their experience at different stages of the project. Next, we've got the design and documentation. This stage might be managed by a design engineer or the controls engineer. Either way, the controls engineer's insights are key in shaping the system's design philosophy. Next, we've got the system build and test. And while the panel building might be done in-house or outsourced, it's the controls engineer who conducts the critical testing and pre-commissioning before on-site installation. And then moving on to the on-site installation, while this stage is generally executed by an installation team. However, the controls engineer often steps in with troubleshooting bad wiring practices. Now onto on-site commissioning and handover, and generally speaking, this will be the sole responsibility of the controls engineer to ensure everything functions as planned and that the customer is satisfied. And then finally, the aftercare and tech support, and typically in a small team without a tech support department, this crucial post-project support falls on the controls engineer as well because they're usually the ones who possess a comprehensive technical understanding of the entire system. I'm hoping from that you can see how the controls engineer is involved at every stage of a project, which makes them the epitome of a generalist and why they're invaluable in small teams. But how do you cultivate this level of versatility in your team? Well, the secret lies in standardized, cross-functional training coupled with a culture that values continuous learning and adaption. So now let's dive into how this training framework will revolutionize your team's capabilities and flexibility. So our journey to develop generalist engineers begins with the backbone of any control system, electrical schematics. And as I'm sure you can imagine, getting to grips with these essential blueprints is a fundamental step which paves the way for every subsequent step of learning moving forward. For engineers to truly grasp these schematics though, it's vital to pair them with real world visuals of the actual system. And this will help them comprehend and translate the drawn blueprints into real world components of that system. So the next phase, engineers will delve into the practical world of control panel construction. And this crucial hands-on stage is where they bring system plans to life, transforming mere enclosures into fully operational automation systems. And this process really is instrumental in understanding not only the components, the what, but also the assembly process, the how. And these insights are invaluable for later stages, particularly with the design phase. And it's important to note why we start with the construction rather than design, despite it seeming counterintuitive to the chronological progression of a project. But this method allows engineers to build upon their foundational understanding built at the schematic stage and allows them to get hands-on experience immediately, strengthening that connection between drawn blueprints and physical components. And this experience will enhance their ability to visualize effectively and make smarter design decisions in later stages. Now the next stage, having mastered control panel construction, engineers advance into testing and pre-commissioning, ideally in a workshop environment away from on-site pressures and distractions. And this is more than just checking boxes and following procedures. It's an active and engaging process where engineers delve into system operations where they'll be working through faults and testing various scenarios applying the skills that they've learned in the previous stages and this stage is crucial for honing the engineers problem solving skills where they'll be troubleshooting making necessary adjustments and addressing any faults that may have arisen during the panel building phase and this stage will really deepen their grasp of system functionality 
and will familiarize them with common issues encountered in control systems. And arguably the most important detail from this phase is that it starts building confidence in the engineers, preparing them for real world challenges that they see on site. Okay, moving on to the next step now, and this stage, engineers should now be equipped with a comprehensive understanding where they can leverage their knowledge from the schematics, the panel building, and the testing to inform the design process. So not only will engineers now master the design process, but they'll become proficient in using CAD softwares to do it. And this phase goes a lot further than just doodling diagrams. It's all about envisioning systems that meet specific requirements and not only designing systems that work on paper, but ensuring that these designs are practical and efficient when being built and tested in the real world. And this is a stage that really does separate the men from the boys. Multi-talented engineers capable of delivering entire projects on their own compared to technicians performing individual tasks. And this is where engineers become true system architects, able to design functional control and automation systems. Now onto this final stage of PLC program. So here is where the engineers bring together all of their accumulated knowledge to craft functional control philosophies and focus on bringing systems to life through PLC programming. Now remember, every step in our training framework is interlinked and builds on top of the previous step. So diving into PLC programming without a solid foundation in these previous steps can lead to costly errors and is why we emphasize a gradual step-by-step -step approach. Now through this step, engineers will not only gain technical proficiency in PLC programming, but also a deep appreciation of the interconnected nature of control systems and they will emerge from this process as well-rounded versatile generalists equipped to handle all the complexities of any automation and control project with confidence. Now, if you're a business owner or a senior leader and would like to get a deeper understanding of how to implement what we've been through, then you might be interested to learn more about our training and coaching programs. And there's a few different levels available depending on where you're at with your business but with all of them, you'll get practical hands-on training. So what I mean by that is it's not theoretical, it's not out of a book, and we focus on real world projects and coached by people like myself who have real world experience and know how to deliver projects successfully within the automation and control industries. So I'd like to invite you to book a call with us so we can learn a bit more about you and your business and discover two or three things that you can do within your business immediately to get your team on the path to becoming those invaluable generalist control engineers. And if you want to do it on your own, that's totally cool. Or if you feel like we could help you and you'd like to work with us, then that's even better. And if that was the case, we would then walk you through the process of how we would get your team trained where they're fully capable of confidently delivering each stage of a project without you having to use your own in-house resources to get them there. So if you're still here and committed to building a successful team of skilled, well-rounded engineers in controls and automation, just book a call with us down below. It's completely free. Worst case scenario is you waste a small amount of your time. Best case scenario is it changes you, your team and your business. Thanks for your time and attention. Really appreciate it and hopefully see you soon.